What's up guys, Jeremy here, and today we're gonna do something we have never done before. We are going to play Doctor. The rated G version, of course. So what's that mean? We are going to strip away all the extra things, and we're going to look at the one thing that most of us are always trying to cover up. Today, we're going to look at the body. Fads fade, movements move. God tests to bring out the best. Everybody matters in the body. There are many interesting facts when it comes to your body. For example, fact, the nose can remember 50,000 different scents. Fact, there are 100,000 miles of blood vessels running through your body. Fact, the strongest muscle in your body is your jaw muscle. Fact, just like you have unique fingerprints, you also have a unique tongue print. Fact, your heart mimics the music that you listen to. Fact, the enzymes that right now digest your food, when you die, those enzymes will digest you. Interesting facts. And not only is the body full of interesting facts, the body's full of different parts, and these different parts all have a very specific purpose. Some examples, the brain. It's the boss of the body. It controls everything. The kidneys, they're the trash collector. They take all the garbage out of your blood system. Then you have the white blood cells. The white blood cells are the protectors. They're the ones that fight infections. They're the ones who fight diseases and viruses to try to get into your body. Each part has a purpose. Now, the brain is not designed to smell. The kidneys are not designed to see. Each part has a specific purpose. Each part has a part to play. Our bodies, just like us, just like a sports team, just like a band, we all are different, but we all have a part to play. Let's put this to a test with a little brain game. Take a look at this moving graphic. What do you see? How many of you saw the balls crossing through each other? Go ahead, raise your hand if that's what you saw. Let's see it again. It looks like the balls pass through each other. Now, let's try this again, only this time we're going to add some sound. How many of you saw the balls bounce off each other this time? It's crazy the way our bodies work. When our brain, eyes, and ears work together, we perceive something totally different. That's what happens when different parts of our body work together. It makes things happen. Can you name all five senses? Yes. What are they? Touch, tasting, smell. There's always that one I forget. Seeing and hearing. If you had to lose one of your five senses, which one would it be? Smelling. Seeing. I'm probably hearing. Smelling. Smell, because there's some really bad smells out there. Do you have any stupid human tricks? No. No? No. Where I do this, and then they pop. No. I can do this with my lip. <laughs> not that I can think of. I'm like the whitest dancer you might have ever seen, but that's not really weird. I mean, a lot can of I, Can I see your dancing? Yeah. Okay, let's see what you got. Hey everybody, we actually have a really special treat for you today. Today, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of the episode that you're watching right now. You're gonna see how it all plays out, all the people that are involved every single week to make these kind of things happen. Let's check this out. Thousand miles of blood vessels. Here's the thing about all this. It takes a bunch of people to make this thing happen. As you can see over there, you have the sound guy holding up the boom mic. In the middle, you have the filmmaker getting all the shots. Over there, you have the producer who coordinates everything to make it happen. And of course, that's the talent back there talking to you guys every single week. But what you don't see, there's a bunch of other people part of this process that aren't even here today to make this thing happen. It takes a bunch of people with their unique skills, abilities, and talents to pull this one thing off. And what I think is so great about this whole thing is it reminds me of what the church is all about. It's about a bunch of people with unique gifts, talents, abilities, skills coming together as one body to be a part of something great. That's the church. I 
I don't know about you, but I typically don't think about all the parts of my body. You know, I haven't put much emphasis on my spleen, my gallbladder, or my weenus because it just seems insignificant. Instead, probably like most of you, I focus on the things that people can see, like my face, my arms, my abs. Okay, probably not my abs. But we put emphasis on the things that seem to matter most. That is until you get sick or until a pain shows up. And then those things that seem insignificant matter a lot more because every part matters. And here's what I don't want you to miss today. Every one of you matters. Every one of you is important. Every one of you is needed. And I know it's easy to look around. It's easy to compare and to think, I'm not as important as that person up on stage or the person that's sitting up by the stage, but that's not true. Everyone's important. Check out what the Bible says in Romans 12, starting in verse four. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, we sort of talked about that. It says, so it is with Christ body. Christ's body can be a little bit confusing, but basically when Jesus left this earth, he didn't just want to leave a book, a message. He wanted to leave people. You see, God's plan A for people to hear about Jesus is the people who already know Jesus. And all those people together make up one body. The verse goes on. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. What Paul was saying is, hey, we're one body, many parts, and Everybody matters in the body. I'm gonna repeat that because I think that's the most important thing we're gonna to say today. Everybody matters in the body. As you saw in the story, we're all important. We all have a part to play. So what part do you play? You know, Paul doesn't just sort of leave us out there hanging. He begins to sort of list it out in Romans chapter 12. So let's pick it back up. It says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Listen to which one maybe fits you. He says, so if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Why? Because this is what Jesus would have done. Everybody matters in the body. And when you don't do your part, can I tell you what happens? We miss out, the body misses out. People who are watching us, they miss out and you miss out. Everybody matters in the body. But now on the flip side, when everybody does their part, the body gets healthier, the body gets stronger, the body can function at a higher level. You see this in the book of Acts, the first church, everybody's sharing, everybody's using their gifts and it's recorded that the church grew daily. Why? Because the body was functioning properly. Everybody was doing their part. Everybody matters in the body. 
everybody matters in the body. Serving and living out your purpose does not do which of the following? A. Relieve stress. B. Make you feel more tired. C. Fill the brain with feel-good chemicals. D. Lower depression. The answer is B. It does not make you feel more tired. But serving and living out your purpose does have many physical health benefits. What is something that you are good at? I don't know, I can snap. That's about it, nothing else. Sports and school. Um, I'm good at running. Being able to make friends, I, I would say. I like helping people. Giving people advice, like uh, how they should go about their problems. So what do you think the purpose of the church is? To unite everybody as one unit. To lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. For people to uh, experience Christ in a real way, and not just for people to say that they are a believer, but to show up other people by our actions. Uh, to serve God and do what He has called you to do. So to reach people that don't know God and to help them whenever they're in need. So what can you do to further the purpose of the church? Um, by just being purposeful with my friends and with my life. Reaching people in different places that would never know him. Mm, by serving on the weekend or getting more people involved. One of the main things I do is go out and invite people to church. I have, always have a pack of uh, invite cards in my car. To serve and help others and lead them to Christ. So how do we make the church stronger? How do we get healthier? How do we function at a higher level? We have to remember the things that are important to our physical body. First of all, we have to get the right things inside of us. We have to get more truth. We have to eat the right things, consume the right things. If you're not coming to Switch every single week, be here. Gain more truth. If you're not getting to God's Word, get into God's Word, pray. Those are things that are gonna help us get stronger. Those are things we need more of. The second thing is we need to exercise. All the stuff that we're learning, all the things we're hearing, we need to act it out. We need to live it out. We need to exercise, use our gifts and talents. Here's why this is so important. We are the body of Christ. And when Christ came to this earth, he came to bring hope. And when he left this earth, he left us to carry out that message. You see, we are the church and we are the hope of the world. And we can do infinitely more together than we can apart. Everybody matters in the body. What part do you play? And will you play your part? Everybody matters in the body.